one thing I like doing is like these depression uh, bend harmonics where it's like, instead of bending the note up, you're going. <laughs> hey, my name is Dean Lamb and I play in the technical death metal band Archfire from here in Vancouver, BC, Canada. And today, in this video, I'm taking a guitar lesson from the uniquely talented Mark Hulk. So Mark is one of three guitar players in his band Periphery, and we recently got to spend some time with them. We played uh, some shows in late 2023 supporting Periphery, and just speaking with him backstage, I kind of instantly knew that he and I had a lot of shared interests, both musically and otherwise. So I thought it'd be great to get some time with him one-on-one -on -one and just have a guitar in our hands and just kind of see what happens. In this video, we go over a bunch of really exciting topics like our shared love for pinch harmonics, <laughs> how Mark utilizes three guitar players at once in his compositions, the interesting dynamics of collaborative writing, how his composition has improved and changed within the last 15 years, and a bunch of other really nerdy topics. If you want to see the entire hour-long unedited lesson, along with full guitar transcriptions of everything that both Mark and myself play, hit the join button underneath of this video. There should be a little button there and you can click that. And once again, thank you so much to Sweetwater Music for sponsoring this series. Everything that I play that they offer is available in one link in the description there. You can click on that, check out everything that I play, uh, including what kind of guitar processors I use, or strap locks, or uh, just kind of everything that I have that they offer, it's in there. And now I'm very excited to bring to you my lesson with Mark Holcomb. I love pinch harmonics. I put them into riffs all the time, and I even live, I'll add them. I'll be like, oh, this riff, oh. I should have put the pinch harmonic in here. So, uh, you know, and, and I didn't, or and it's probably annoying as fuck, because if you think about it, just like that, it's like, all right, I love the sound of it, but... Some people don't. But anyway, do you throw them in everywhere? How do you get them? What is your technique for getting them? It's my favorite. Dude, it's my favorite thing. It's my favorite <laughs> fucking thing. Yes. I love it. And seriously, I'm not even talking about like, forget all this. I don't even. Like, I don't really do much of that. But dude, what I do, and I'm in love with this. And I have to almost like talk myself into doing it less. And sometimes, like maybe like 80% of the time, 90% of the time, the guys appreciate when I do it because they think it's cool and spontaneous. But I can tell the other 10%. Or 20 percent they just like mm, yeah, stop yeah, that, yeah, mm, no. yeah. but i can't because i grew up on randy Rhodes and i grew up on eddie i mean even like zach wilds throwing it in whenever because the impulse hits you or because you're feeling it or you're in the zone or there's just something that makes you want to choke up on your pick and dig in and do something that you've never done before unscripted and so yeah what i've been doing that i find kind of funny <laughs> So that's a tuning that we use now. Uh, I, I introduced it to the band a couple records ago for a song called Reptile. Pretty, pretty frequently now. It's just a really fun. I think I first heard of it through. Um, there's two places. It was the band Sixth. Oh yeah. And Mastodon yeah. used it. Yeah, back in the day. So it's G G is a low two string. It's also really satisfying because it's the easiest thing ever to do pinch harmonics on. And I just, you know, I, I don't think I'm doing anything different, not reinventing the wheel as far as it goes. I just choke really, really, really far up so there's barely any pick sticking out. Where does the string touch your thumb? Where does it, is it on the tip of your thumb? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my God, the range, the range of that pinch harmonic sounds so sick. But I love it, dude, because you're just. Well, one, th one thing I like doing is like these depression uh, bend harmonics where it's like instead of bending the note up, you go. Uh, that, that can be. That we actually wrote that into a riff. I put that in, into uh, 
the verse of Reptile. Okay. So yeah, it can be cool. It can really just like punches through the mix like a like a knife, you know. When I put it in a gap, like let's say there's like a big staccato section, like for instance, the end of um, we have a song called Atropos, where where the end is just like it's a really simple. There's a lot of stop start stuff, but if you just throw in. Like just throw in things you can see, like you can see people like physically their head will turn. Yeah. Just like, what is going on? Like, yeah. Why? Why did you do that? And like yeah. this, I don't know if it's a cool thing that you just did or if it sucks, but I don't know. It's just, it's fun, spontaneous thing. It's just another way to have fun with guitar. My buddy Malcolm, he plays in the band in Fury, a uh, very amazing technical fucking awesome band. And he calls that merch money. That's what he calls that one. He'll call pinch harmonics like that merch money. <laughs> How do you do that two times in a row like that? I don't know. That's it's, wild. Well, I ripped it off from Infinite Annihilator because they do that. Oh. Yeah, yeah. But but because they're a studio band, it'll just be like, we'll just take that and we'll just copy paste it and then never have to worry about ever doing it in person because they don't, don't play shows. So for us, it's like, okay, well, I'm going to steal it because I love it, <laughs> but... I'm going to have to figure out how to, how to really do it. Um, so you don't fake that you, you play. So I just oh yeah. saw you play that. Just yep. like, that's what I can't do. It. <laughs> it's I, I got to work to get it even. Like you got it. So even that riff, there's a gap in there. Okay. That gap was the computer that our producer was using. Didn't render out the pinch harmonic that was supposed to be in that gap. And so we're like, oh, okay, oh, it's okay. Well, so we'll listen to the actual version when you actually fix it. And he left it to us overnight. And we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds better, actually. The computer <laughs> fucked up, but it got rid But it actually, that gap, it's just, it fell in the right spot. And it's, I think it's really cool to just be open to like fuck ups like that, where it's like, you know, it, you, sometimes you'll take a riff and you'll move it. You're like, okay, we're going to experiment with that riff. I'm going to move it over here. Okay, I'll quickly do it, move it, play. Oh, whoops, in the, it's in the wrong spot. I'm like, oh, wait, no, that sounds way better. Dude, that's funny. Like, I was having this conversation with a couple of my bandmates, and, like, th there's so many records that we put on a pedestal, right? Like, like our favorite albums of all time, we revere, and we worship every detail of yeah. them, that we think everything is deliberate, and that these li there's these little quirks about it that we're just, oh, yeah, that's just, that's just Devin Townsend being a mastermind or a genius or whatever. And then you read the stories, and... There's so many instances of stuff like this that are just mistakes or oversights or shortcomings, like levels not being mixed properly or things being left out or beats missing, um, stuff like you just described. Like, and then we just we eat it all up and we're like, yeah, man, they're visionaries. But yeah, like, <laughs> the, yeah. Are you like a theory guy traditionally or not really? Like, are you doing trial and error when you're writing that kind of stuff? Because you listen to some periphery stuff or haunted chores and it's like, how the fuck did you come up with that chord? I don't come from a theory background at all. Like I was, I was pretty much, I was 95% self-taught. Like I took two lessons my first several months of playing. I would just pick songs off the radio and, and, and play them. Like if, I remember hearing um, Alice in Chains, you know, Man in the Box when I was, when I was 13 and being like, oh, I gotta learn, I gotta learn that solo. And it just seemed like the, the hardest thing ever you know, and in your first year of guitar playing. But it's just like th things like that, like setting these like sort of self-teaching goals to myself, no matter how ludicrous they seemed or sounded in the moment, just like one day I'll get there. But no, I mean, g given the fact that I, I don't come from a theory background, nor nor do Jake or Misha for, for Okay, for, for okay, I didn't matter. know that. I'm constantly just fiddling around and, and tinkering with what sounds good and, you know, chords. That That's always been a big thing for me. I mean, I used to sort of mess around with um with power chords, um, I just, I, I started using my thumb a lot. I have bigger hands, so I, I, I tended to drape my thumb over the, like the top side of the fretboard. The but like, right, that, that's how I would fret power chords when I was younger. Like I would just do this because of, maybe I was lazy, maybe it felt good. And then I started to sort of flesh out the rest of a chord with the, my remaining four fingers. So you take your thumb, lean it over the top, and then just, and this sounds really uh, reductive and almost Neanderthal, but like, just kind of see what sounds good voicing by voicing, you know, note by note. And I know that if I lean my, my thumb down and I put my pinky uh, two frets above, that's 
basically it's it's a power chord. It's just like, you know. So you have the power chord with your thumb, and then you have this, um, what's that, fifth? No? I don't even know. Um, <laughs> and then you start building out the rest of the chord um, note by note. You can get really um, sort of surgical and specific with the way, you know, a traditional a power chord sounds. Again, this is like, it's really basic, you know, building block stuff. Um, but once you build a chord that you like or a second chord that you like, and I have a bunch of favorite, like, sort of go-to, I call them, like, power chord replacements. Yeah, so instead of playing, like, you know, you know that's a big Haunted Shores chord that's everywhere in the Haunted Shores and Periphery catalog as well. Or, I hear that one in Artspire sometimes. <laughs> yeah. This is some um, expensive sounding chords, dude. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> the point is like, I, I, it's just, it's about finding fun, sort of spicier ways to play power chords, to get the ideas across. And, you know, a power chord will work just fine, but like, what else can I squeeze in there? And it also gives you some other ideas as well when it comes to putting down other instrumentation. It's like, I really like this voicing over this chord. But it kind of sounds better if I play a power chord. What if we put this voicing down, you know, like orchestrally or, or make make some other instrument play it? You know, it's like it opens up a whole avenue of ways to go about, um, you know, layering your music.